Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about Sigma 28-105 to f2.8 lens. So let's dive right into it. Now this puppy is a zoom lens. Basically, whenever you have two numbers rather than just like 50 mm, you have like, you know, 24 or 28 to 105. That means it's a zoom lens. If you can travel between that, it's a zoom range. You want to figure out what is the X factor, multiply, uh, basically divide by the larger number. So 24 divided by 70, 70 divided by 200, 28 divided by 105, that will give you the X factor. So what is this? Well, you have to understand fundamentally after 150 years of photography kind of realized one very important thing that there are three lens kit, so to say, and we have kind of narrowed into it. Like, you know, we tried everything, everything under the sun. And then we realized that these three lenses, if you have these three puppies, you good, you good, like 90% of the scenarios or 99% of scenarios, you good. So these lenses are ultra wide. Uh, that goes from like 16 or 18 to 24. Then you have 24 to 70, then 70 to 200. Now these three puppy in F2.8, now be mindful, we used to make zoom lenses, but they were not very good eh, because optical formulas were not very refined. The glass quality itself was not So back in the days, people were like, dude, you have to want quality photos, use prime lenses, not zoom lenses. However, as our technology evolved, zoom became actually useful. And in that time, this puppy became the, these three things became the holy trinity. Meaning the moment any camera company is like, I'm launching a camera, the first few lenses they will launch is this one. Does not matter it's Panasonic, does not matter it's a Sony, Canon, Nikon, take your pick. These three always have to reach the market first. And these have to be flagship, meaning your best quality must be in these things. So, in that ecosystem, the competition is very fierce. And you have also have to understand, even though these things are expensive, especially from first party, as in like uh, you buy from the Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, uh, Panasonic, they are expensive. You have to understand they are very high competitive market. Meaning if you release a cheaper variant, people may not buy it. Like this time we have learned it the hard way that this thing you do not cheap out on. Like it, even if you have to pay 2x the price, you will pay the 2x the price if quality is important to you, which again, for most people it is. So you have to understand the competition is very fierce. It's not just like, oh, it's cheaper. It has to be actually good. So somebody figured out what if we made a bridge between these two puppies, uh, 24 to 70 to 70 to 200. What if we have a bridge starting somewhere in the starting point of 24 and went a bit inside uh, that puppy to 105. So that range is available. Now it's a bridge, so to say. Now be mindful that lens is available from Sony itself for Sony cameras. That's good, but it's only F4. Meaning, if you put that puppy on a system, again, if you are happy with F4, go YOLO on it. If you are not, this is the only option on Sony pipeline, so to say. And uh, there are other options that like is F2.8 in Canon, but you have to understand price is stupid, meaning, uh, this is Canon RF 24 to 105 F2.8. Uh, yeah, this puppy is 2 lakh 70 thousand. That is a bonkersly large number. Compare that to uh, the smaller numbers, which is like Sigma 28 to 105, that is 1 lakh 24,000. Or if you're looking like American numerical system, it's like 269K versus 124K. So fundamentally, the lens that we are talking about here is cheap compared to first party. And it's a very good tool if your uh, use case matches for it. For example, if majority of photos are from 35 mm to 90 mm, which again, ironically, is a lot of photographers prefer this range, especially for event photography. That means you put this lens, you forget about it. There is no other lens. One lens, go, done, go home. So for those sort of people, people are really interested into this puppy. So what about the performance? Now, this is a good balance list. Like nothing about this lens is like, oh my God. But everything about this is like, damn, it's balanced. And I can go about this formula and that formula, but idea is um, Sigma actually re-engineered the lens formula, which mind you, uh, many lens formula, even though the lens body is new, they may be running on the same formula that was developed in 1970s. So this is a brand new formula. I can even the aperture ring has been changed. Uh, so in this new optical formula, everything is focused on balance. It's not the, wow, it's like, good. It's like, well, how about the macro? Good. How about the closer? Good. How about pin coarsen distortion? Very little. Good. How what about uh, barrel distortion? Good. Everything about this lens is good and balanced. Meaning you won't be like, oh, I only like, you know, this lens is very good, but it's like very soft and fully open up. No, nope. it's good. What I was like, you know, narrow it down. It's good. But what about macro? It's good. Everything about this lens is good.
and it has a delectable uh, deselectable uh, aperture ring declickable sorry uh, so meaning the aperture ring you have a button you can press it for photographer that makes it kit 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 because again photographers we think in aperture when you're like okay f2 half of a f2.8 uh, f2.8 the f4 like you know that aperture setting but videographers hate that it needs a smooth ramp so for that ramp you declick it and then you get full manual control so you have that option that's like for photographers is not that big of a deal but for many people it's like shut up take money just for that uh, smooth control shut up take money it has no image stabilization you have to understand while sony e-mount is open it's not open source meaning you cannot just use all the features that sony has sony has a lot of restraint in it meaning you can build a lens you can certify it you can run it you will uh, get autofocus but you will not get high fps meaning you cannot go beyond 15 fps when you are talking about burst mode so if your camera is like i got this i can do 120 fps yeah the lens would be like a hey, third party lens directed throttle the speed down to uh, 15 it does not throttle in proportion, it's just a hard lock. So you have to be mindful. If your camera body itself is faster than the lens, be mindful of that. And again, it does not affect on the video, but it has a factor on burst rate. Video, uh, not, no other thing. A uh, video, there is one issue that if you zoom in and zoom out, uh, like focus breathing is there and it's bad, you can utilize new Canon, uh, the new Sony bodies, which has uh, automatic removal of that. Now be mindful, that will only work with first party lenses. It will not work with third party. However, because I said the lens formula is completely new, they actually made it almost imperceptible in this puppy, which is the, which is the biggest like damn. That's like somebody because be mindful. This sort of features that they're like oh, par focal and almost no focus breathing and good this. These are easily available. Just they are available on broadcast lenses, which are this big. So if you size is not a limit, weight is not a limit, cost is not a limit, you can have a lens that is like, you know, ultra zoom lenses that has like super crisp quality from fro like actual fidelity quality from 4K to like, you know, uh, 8K even. And you can be like uh, very close up to like at the other side of football field. That is available. It's just that that's why the fo optical formula matters here. It's a really good uh, system. 82 millimeter filter thread, meaning all the accessories will work with that. And you're like, why 80, 82? Company generally try to standardize to something, either to their own ecosystem. For example, Tamron ecosystem is 77. Uh, or this puppy, they are trying to match with Sony system, meaning Sony is using 82. Let's also use 82. So if you are in a Sony ecosystem, you have polarizers, uh, UV filters and whatever have you you can just took your drift into this so that's the filter thread no image stabilization again that's the limitation of the e-mount e-mount will not transfer the data telemetry data that is needed for in-body stabilization again lenses can do that especially telephoto lenses but the moment you start to approach the wide angle the algorithm does need to make love to the camera algorithm otherwise it will be very wonky so yeah that's not work very well so um, now because this is the 2020s, we are talking about linear motors now, because again, thankfully, uh, I have like Sigma lenses, uh, that is, you're seeing me right now from that DSLR lens, it has bad motor, like it makes noise, it's like, it makes noise, uh, this, silent. Actually, at this point in time, it will be odd, like people will only talk about it, it's like, hey, why the heck it's making sound? You have crossed that threshold, at this point in time, video is big enough thing that every camera company is like, bro, it's a video lens, make sure that it's smooth and sound. So it's quiet, it's fast, you do not have to worry about it. And good macro clarity, be mindful, there are many lenses, especially in this sort of uh, wide uh, capability lenses that can do much higher macro, but their fuzziness increases too much, meaning it is not resolving it very quickly. You have to understand, like X Factor, it's uh, for children. If you go to a micro shop uh, manufacturer and it's like, hey, I want like, you know, 500X zoom. They're like, bro, you do not know anything about it. What is the fidelity? Like, can you you know see clearly so in those sort of scenarios this lens is surprisingly good like good you look like damn meaning if you have a high resolution camera or you have the luxury of like you know those pixel shift mode and you have a good tripod you're good like you can do quality macro with this puppy like quality macro so that's good no focus uh, breathing in video meaning even without that sony's a fancy crop function you do not have to worry about so performance wise this is a very well built well opt like it's a good optical lens meaning you buy this you will not be like oh only if it had this if that no this is a good lens not the latest and greatest in everything but it is good all around meaning oh how about macro good how about telephoto good how about white good how about vignette good everything good new optical formula.
So what about the competition? Well, uh, if you need full speed, for example, if you are buying a Sony body that has uh, higher than 15 FPS burst rate and you need that, uh, in those sort of scenario, I would say go with Sony. Uh, even though it's F4, you have to understand modern cameras are quite good, especially cameras made after 2020. Their noise performance ratio is good enough. You will you will be fine. Like, the, yes, ISO will go up, but you have to understand. We're kind of spoiled by watching YouTubers where it's like every photo is like zoomed into 400%. It's like, ain't nobody got time for that. People don't even print photos anymore. Everybody's just watching in this mobile phone. Ain't nobody got time for that. So we kind of over limit ourselves. Again, as a tech reviewer, we kind of understand why they have to do that. But you have to understand, you do not need to go pixel peeping every time. So uh, if you're like, hey, F4 would be really bad. No, it won't be. F4 in a full frame with a good quality optics is good. You're not going to be suffering. And it will give you speed. Again, if you need speed, uh, speed is higher priority, then that's it. And it's much lighter, which is far bigger vector than you realize. Like again, in your young age, you're like, I got this. Mine's bigger than yours. I can handle this. Yeah, there is an upper limit to that. And there is a very insidious penalty of that. If you're carrying a camera that is big and heavy and your muscles are fighting it, you will become dull basically at the end of the day your brain will not have creative ideas and you will not even know that your brain is not working in full cylinder because majority of the power is going here uh, so trust me it's one of those things that as photographers age they realize very early on it's like yeah if somebody is like hey this lens is 2x more expensive but it is 100 gram lighter shut up take money weight matters so going to f4 gives you much pleasant experience much faster experience so if you are in those sort of boat where it's like you know what do I really want to carry a big daddy all the time? That's up to you. So that's not a lens that you should dismiss. Let that be very clear. I'm not saying it's the greatest lens. It's just like you cannot just say, oh, it's F4. Let's throw it away. No, it's a good option. You may look into it. And again, it's cheaper also. Uh, another option is you're like, hey, I really like that, but I am not happy with that 28. I would rather have 24. And you're like, hey, if I can get from 24 to 105, I'm sorted. This is your lens. Now, be mindful. This is the primary reason why I always say select the lens first before you select the camera ecosystem uh, if you jumped into this and you're like okay i'm gonna have this you have to be mindful of that this is not a compact lens meaning when uh, Tamra, uh, sigma made it sigma was like a collapsible lens body meaning you can easily carry it this the moment you open it up it becomes long this is never collapsible this is huge and uh, there are good things to it but there are side effects to it it's big it's heavy it's clunky and again Company knows this is big and heavy. They have tripod foot on it. So if you are doing some sort of photography where you have the luxury of a monopod on your lens, go YOLO. But if you are like carrying it, yeah, you may find that you uh, like you do not need to do gyms anymore. So be very mindful. And on top of that, the price is 2.2x better. Is it 2.2x better than this? No, no. That's why I said the lens is really good. This is like not 2.2, like at maybe, at best you're like, hey, it can go even bit wider. Which again, for some people are like, shut up, take money. I need that one too. Fair enough, but be mindful. This is ludicrously expensive and heavy. And then you have other option, which is from Tamron. Tamron has uh, 35 to 150. Now I like, okay, that has shifted more towards that uh, 70 to 200 lens. Um, but it has that one unique advantage that this puppy goes from F2.8 to F2. Now, is that a big deal? Optically, yes. Engineering wise, holy damn, how the heck they figured it out. Yeah, uh, it's good. It has some unique characteristics, which again, for some people are like, shut up, take money. Other people are like, I really can't uh, make it worth my money, so to say. But be mindful. It's more on tele and if you're a tele kind of guy, go you'll on it. If you're like more wide kind of guy, that's not for you. And uh, it is heavy. It's heavier than this. F2 may sound just a minor upgrade from F2.8, but it's a ginormous upgrade. So the lenses are bonkersly heavy. So that's the competition. So it's it's actually good. Now I am a bit hopeful that Sony might release a lens like this, but lighter, hopefully. Price does not matter that much, but again, if it's lighter, good. So for whom this is? Well, there's a very simple uh, calculation for you. Do you need to go higher than 15 FPS in burst mode? If yes, do not look into this lens. And uh, what about the lack from 24 to 28? Is that matter important for you? Is that impactful for you? If yes, do not look into it. If not, then again, have fun, enjoy. And price to performance ratio of this lens is surprisingly good. Like this is one of those lenses you can give to someone and they'll be like, hey, good stuff. This is good lens. Like that's the whole point of it. Nothing about the lens is like, you know, uh, groundbreaking. Everything about the lens is like, hey, it's a good lens. You put it in your camera, good.
so price to performance ratio is very good and it's suitable for pro work meaning uh, you can do a lot of event photography and in Indian weddings we have wedding rings that are like very integrate so you can really go do quite a good quality macro with it so it's a very good uh, lens in that sort of scenario and uh, you may require other lens to cover some edges for example if you are more of a tele kind of guy you may still need to buy 70 to 200 or 200 to 400 which will give you like again if, especially if you are doing sports or you are like really hard on like you know portraiture because yes if you can do really 300 or 400 mm the photos become like almost flat uh, again some people love it shut up take money corporate people love it so you may need something to like you know extend the range uh what about telephoto if you are more of like agri uh, architectural kind of guy you may want a wider angle so in those scenario buy something that uh, takes from like 16 mm to 35 mm to cover your bases so to say so so it's a very good lens and again that uh, 24 uh, not having 24 to 28 not that big of a deal however that 15 fps may be a bigger deal because again as we are reaching to uh, sony a7 mark 5 release date i'm reasonably sure it might exceed that 15 fps cap that they have put on the cheaper bodies again it's an artificial cap that's why canon can easily do uh, 40 and yes canon does not allow third party lenses canon is very clever they know you are stupid and you do not pay attention they are like hey we have opened the lens no what they have opened is rf aps-c lens not full frame so do not make that mistake that's why I like always select the lens first only then make every other decision so this is a good addition to sony ecosystem and i'm reasonably sure many people will be very happy like very happy with this it's like hey i'm happy one lens gets most of my work done me good me happy so this was my presentation on uh, basically Sigma's uh, 28 to 105 f2.8. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.